My name is Chiara Ambrosio and I am a teaching fellow in Philosophy of Science at the Department of Science and Technology Studies at University College London. I have been working extensively on the connections between art and science. This is pretty much in, uh, in my background. So I look at science and the visual arts and how they connect together. But I've always been very, very interested in the process of discovery, which has been a very important part of my PhD here at UCL. Um, and this is what I'm going to discuss today. In the literature and in philosophy, you've got different strands and different kinds of approaches to the idea of discovery and invention. And in fact, you have a tension between what is discovered and what is invented. You would never say that Einstein invented relativity. You would say that he discovered relativity. But you wouldn't say that uh, an inventor discovered the dynamo or uh, um, a, an electric generator. You would say that that piece of equipment is invented. So you have a tension both in the history and in the philosophy of science between uh, theories that are discovered and uh, entrepreneurial work that consists in inventions. And this is a tension that I think uh, um, uh, is not making a lot of sense anymore nowadays. We are not producing anymore a piece of equipment, but what we are producing is more something intellectual, the product of our intellectual work. For instance, I would be very wary in saying that an algorithm is either discovered or invented, uh, or a piece of software. Well, you, you don't really know where the boundaries are, philosophically, at least philosophically speaking. And of course, this raises a lot of other problems which are connected um, to the question of discovery and invention, such as how is intellectual property changing, what kind of property is intellectual property. You've got a long discussion of the question of intellectual property in the case of a piece of equipment uh, in uh, the past, but now intellectual property is really about the intellectual content of what we are, uh, we are producing. There are lots of stories in the history of science and technology um, of people who were trying to find something and serendipitously stumbled on something else. Uh, so you've got lots of these kinds of characterizations. But I think that serendipity needs to be taken with a pinch of salt, in the sense that uh, one of the very famous uh, quotes that historians like to use is the idea that chance favors the prepared mind. Uh, discoveries are not necessarily fortuitous or serendipitous, uh, and even when you stumble on something new. You will stumble on something new because you will be able to recognize that particular discovery as something new. This is actually very true for all kinds of discoveries. Uh, we, when we try to come up with something new, we are always doing it in light of what we are looking for and we always use new evidence in light of what we already know. And if you think about it, um, this is pretty much the way in which our mind works. Um, this this is the way in which we come up with metaphors, for instance. Um, metaphors are way of, ways of linking something new to something that we know already. And this is very much the case with the way in which we process digital content when, uh, when we browse the web, for instance. Um, we would make searches mostly based on what we are looking for, and the, this is a way of narrowing down the very huge amount of information that would otherwise uh, um, be available to us. And there is a sense in which that's the way our brain works. We cannot process more than a certain amount of information, so we need to um, use what uh, we are familiar with as a guide to our new searches. And the web is a particularly good example simply because there is so much content. Invention is not anymore about small portable objects. There are no longer young entrepreneurs putting a piece of equipment in a suitcase and opening the suitcase and showing it to potential sellers. Discover invention and discovery now are about uh, 
uh, uh, about equipment which is not as tangible as it used to be. So one of the interesting questions that I think we should start thinking about is where, which direction uh, are invention and discovery taking in uh, the, digital, uh, the digital age.